What's up everyone? Mr. Noobtube Gamer, today we're playing Anthem in 2022. It's been three years since this game came out in February of 2019, and it's been two years since we've had any content drops. This game hasn't had any support since September of 2019. They were meaning to do a big overhaul of Anthem called Anthem Next. It was supposed to be a huge overhaul of the gameplay and the story and everything but it just never happened. So the Anthem of 2022 is the same exact game as it was in late 2019, in fall of 2019, because that's the last time that the game had any new content. So if you played the game at any point over the past two and a half years or so, and you weren't a big fan of Anthem, you didn't really like the game, you didn't feel like it was that interesting, your opinion of the game is not going to change in 2022. Unfortunately, they gave up on this game rather quickly. It took them less than a year before they pulled the plug. And of course, Anthem was a game that wasn't very well received at launch due to lack of content and lack of meaningful story because this is a Bioware game after all. The same people that brought Dragon Age and Mass Effect this game felt nothing like that at all as far as the role-playing elements are concerned. We didn't really have any of that in Anthem, really. It's like if Bioware's name was not on the box, you would have no idea that Bioware made this game at all because Bioware is famous for having these really amazing single-player experiences, but here we have an online-only game that has basically no story. Well, not a very compelling story, at least. Anthem has a lot more in common with Destiny than it does with Mass Effect, especially it being more of a space fantasy game than a sci-fi game. You know, those kind of are two different genres. Space fantasy is just all-out fantasy and deals a lot more with powers and gods and that kind of stuff. Kind of like how Star Wars has the Force. Destiny has the light and the darkness. Anthem kind of has its own world going on where the entire world was built by some kind of god and definitely has more fantasy elements than Mass Effect, which was mostly grounded in reality. I mean, of course, you know, a sci-fi game grounded in reality is kind of a joke, but you know what I mean? Like, it was more based off, of, like, there was a scientific explanation for everything that happened in Mass Effect, like the Reapers and the Protheans and all the technology, while Anthem is more like, uh, yeah, we just have all these powers and the gods created all this shit, and that's pretty much how it is. Definitely a much different feel than Mass Effect, despite two of them, you know, having space elements and having advanced technology. They're definitely way different in terms of presentation, in terms of the world building. And speaking for myself, I just don't find the world of Anthem to be half as engaging as the world of Mass Effect. And even Destiny I found to be a lot more interesting, at least Destiny 2. Destiny 1 was kind of shallow. The funny thing is, there are a lot of things that Destiny and Anthem have in common. You can tell that EA really wanted Anthem to be the EA version of Destiny so bad. Not only in the premise of the two games being similar and that they're both space fantasy, they're both online only looter shooters. I mean, pretty much everything that you have in Anthem, you can directly compare to Destiny. The freelancers are pretty much the guardians in Destiny, being the last hope of civilization to save the world from the evil darkness. And there's not much left of humanity in Destiny. The only civilization you have is the last city on Earth. And in Anthem, you got Fort Tarsus. They're both these hub worlds that you can use to interact with characters in the game and to buy shit and to upgrade your weapons and gear and all that kind of stuff which is the same exact way the hub world operates in Destiny and Destiny 2. Anthem and Destiny also have a similar free roaming thing, and you also have raid bosses in both games. Really, the only main difference I can think of between Anthem and Destiny is that Anthem is in third person and Destiny is in first person, and also the Iron Man suits that you fly around with all the time in Anthem. That's like the main gimmick of the game. You even have a similar balancing, like the ultimate abilities and all that kind of stuff. It's like the supercharge in Destiny. I mean, I can go on and on about all the comparisons that can be made between Anthem and Destiny, but the point is, if you've played Destiny before, Anthem will be very, very familiar to you. And I would also say, if you ever played Mass Effect Andromeda before, the gameplay is definitely very much derived from that. Because you know, Mass Effect Andromeda, the gunplay is very similar, the way the weapons feel, and also kind of like the jetpack stuff. Like, Mass Effect doesn't have quite as much of that as Anthem does, but the groundwork was definitely laid out in Mass Effect Andromeda because you did have some of that 
flying stuff and the platforming. A lot of Anthem's gameplay was definitely derived heavily from Mass Effect Andromeda. And you know what? I really didn't like the story of Andromeda, but the gameplay was quite good. So that's actually not a very bad thing that Anthem did. But overall, would I say that Anthem's a good game to play in 2022? Like if you're a new player and you never played this before, like is it a good game, like a new game to invest into? Honestly, I would say no. Not that Anthem is a terrible game, but it just lacks so much content. It hasn't gotten any support in two years and you're gonna beat everything in like I don't know 25 30 hours I would say and for a single player game that's good but for an online game like Anthem that's very little amount of time. You know, the other thing is that these kind of games are played the best with friends and good luck finding friends to play this game. Your friends are definitely more likely to play Destiny 2, which continues to have support and continues to be relevant and get new content than an abandoned game like Anthem, you know what I mean? You can still play with randoms, the servers still work fine, and the player count is actually pretty good considering that EA hasn't done anything with the game in a very long time. Like if you're trying to queue up, if you're trying to do a stronghold, if you're trying to play a regular story mission, chances are you're going to be able to find three other people to play with. I mean, not all the time. It depends on the time of day. Like if you're playing in the middle of the night, you know, off peak hours, you're going to be less likely to find people because it's not a very populated game. But there are enough people where you can get your shit done with randoms if you don't have friends to play with. So in that way, it's not the worst game to play in 2022, but you can definitely do a lot better. I think they definitely could have done more with the game if they tried, but considering that they abandoned Anthem so that they can put more work into Dragon Age 4 and Mass Effect 4, I'm not gonna complain about that. I love Bioware for Bioware, for those rich single player experiences that you can't get anywhere else. I don't want Bioware to be working on generic live service games. Like, you know, like everyone else is doing that. Bioware should be Bioware. So in a way, I'm kind of happy that they moved on from Anthem, but at the same time, I know there are a lot of people that really were hoping to get more from this game and they were let down. So for those people, I feel kind of bad for, but stuff like that just happens sometimes. Not all live service games are successful. Not all all of them are going to be lasting 10 plus years. It just doesn't always work out that way, and that's fine. Especially if it means that Bioware can move on to bigger and better things, which I think they can. But if you want to play Anthem in 2022, you can pick it up on Xbox Game Pass if you're a Game Pass subscriber. It's already included in your subscription or EA Play, and it's available on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One, which of course, through backwards compatibility, can also be played on PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. Unfortunately, there's no crossplay in Anthem, so if you're on PC and you you have friends on PlayStation, you guys can't play together, sorry. They probably would have added it in at some point if the game was more successful than it was and got more support over time. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Let me know what you guys think about Anthem in 2022. Do you still play it? And what are your overall thoughts on the game? As always, thank you all for watching and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.